So I'm going to do a tear down now of this battery charger that I just recently reviewed. I uh, checked my previous video for that review. Um, this thing seemed to work quite well. I was pretty happy with it. Um, so now we're going to uh, take the thing apart and see what the internals look like, um, see the quality of the build and see if we can figure out a bit more about how this thing works. So first of all they've got these security screws. Um, there's four on the front and then there's another four on the back. So I'm going to take these off first. Okay, so I've just taken the screws out of the front panel here. And um, this enclosure, by the way, is aluminium. And what they've done is they've given it like a rubber sort of coating. I guess it's like a spray-on sort of thing. So it's like got a soft touch to it. Um, but it's, it's actually aluminium in there. Um, so you can see the front panel just comes off like this. And the main PCB is attached to the top there and there's a connector that holds in this here so I'm going to disconnect that so that's rather nice so I'm just going to put that aside for a second um, I'll take this apart in a, uh, later but I just want to see what's inside of this and you can see the base here sort of sliding in and out so I'll just take that out see it's just the, the uh, bottom panel and then I can turn this over so it looks like they're doing all the right things here. Uh, the 240 volt AC 50 hertz mains input here um, is coming into the board. You see they just soldered the active and neutral um, onto the PCB, which is fine. Uh, the earth is crimp lugged, you can see under here, and it's screwed into the, the case. Um, they haven't used a star washer, I don't think. Yes, they have actually. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but in between the lug and the case as a star washer so that will bite and give it some good connections there. Um, we've got a fuse that looks like a poly fuse as well. Got two mobs over there. Um, got a little capacitor here, common mode choke. Um, we've got this bridge rectifier and straight after that we've got this big bolt capacitor which is 100 microfarad, 400 volt. Now after, so 240 volts, after you go through a bridge rectifier and things, I think it's around 360 to 380 volts, something, or, something like that from memory. So um, that's, that's rated for that, so that's fine. See it's got all that sort of silicon elastic stuff around it to stop it from um, wobbling loose, which is good. I'm not sure what the brand is, it's, it'd be a cheap Chinese brand I think. Um, you've got some current limiting resistors to the left there. And then off it goes into the rest of the circuitry. So we've got... I'll just zoom you out a little bit. So we've got the, I mean, this is the, the voltage and current um, source going out to our battery. Um, we've got a transformer here, big inductor here, um, and some other little bits of silicon and stuff. So there's, there's also got this little transformer here, which is probably some sort of flyback arrangement, I think. Just sort of looking at the Got a few caps around there, there and they've got some opto isolators, so that's probably what they're doing with that. Um, so they're using Texas Instruments parts, which is good. I mean, that's quality. Um, you can see these transistors on the side here. They've like bolted down with this rail to keep them flat. They're using seal pads as well to keep them isolated. Um, and that's obviously just heat sinking straight to the aluminium case, which is, that's fine. That's a good design. So you'd have to unscrew those if you're gonna do any work on this board. Um, and I really like the way they've, they've had this front panel here modular as well. Um, so I'll quickly just read off some of these parts here. So this little chip over here is a F5Q510. Uh, this one here, it, that looks like a Fairchild part maybe. This one here is a Texas Instruments, Instruments part. It's a TL3845P. And then this uh, bigger one, the um, DIP16 here, looks like a LM324N and they've got this little uh, trim pot here as well. So you can see also the board revision here is from 2013. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. I'm not going to break it down further than that but it looks like it's decent quality. I mean it's just a single sided um, through hole PCB but I mean it's there's nothing too shocking there few wonky components here and there, but nothing seriously bad. I mean, it, it all looks pretty good. They're using 
decent enough parts. These caps are cheap though, cheapy Chinese capacitors. So it's probably the first thing that will fail in this. Um, if it's not sort of, you know, user error, plugging something weird into it. So I find it interesting that um, they've got all the controls on this little board here. I mean, I guess that makes sense. That's sort of where your indicators are. Um, obviously you want your PZO sounder to be fairly close, I guess. I'm just gonna unscrew this. So they're just using, uh, again, using these sort of shake-proof um, star washers to retain everything. These screws are just going straight to plastic, which is fine. I mean, this isn't a, something that you're supposed to be taking apart. So it's not like they have to worry about, um, you know, the thread stripping out and wearing or anything like that. It basically gets put together and that's the end of the story until someone like me comes along, I suppose. And that's basically it. That's, um, bunch of surface mount. So um, there's your push button. Just select the different type of battery and it lights up these 0805 LEDs. Um, and that's just from this piece of plastic here. You can see it's just got a slight sort of bump on there. And if you press that, that tab just transfers through this tactile switch. It's very simple. That's the only user input. Um, so that's basically it. It's a bunch of resistors, a couple of um, transistors here and that one push button and then they've got the um, obviously the 8-bit micro the Atmel Atmega 8A um, and I, I suspect this is a thermistor for um, if it gets too hot in the enclosure it, it'll basically shut off on thermal thermal overload a little piezo beeper and a little trim pot which I'm guessing is just to calibrate um, calibrate the measurements the, on this board here. You can see they've also got this little um, in-circuit serial programming port here. Should be just the, sort, the, the normal sort of SPI programming port. Um, very simple, again, 2013. So that was a quick teardown of this SCA automatic battery charger. And I have to say, after tearing it down, um, I'm still quite impressed with it. I mean, the quality is all good. Um, they've used decent brand parts, Texas Instruments and Atmel for their little 8-bit micro there. Um, it's all gone together quite neatly and quite well and I like the way um, that this front panel is modular. I like that they're using a nice big sturdy aluminium case. Um, yeah, it's all good stuff. So $130, bucks, um, I think it's well worth that price and uh, I expect it to last quite a while. Um, the only thing that may be a bit dodgy is um, those off-brand capacitors, um, but again, for the price point, I'm, that's, I would only really expect that. And um, if something does happen to this or it starts to act up, that's probably the first thing I'll be looking at. So thanks again for watching, guys, and catch you on another video. Cheers.